Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'da habita fillah We've reached the final naqid From the nawaqid al-Islam The final nullifier of Islam From the various, from the ten nullifiers of Islam that we mentioned in the beginning of the treaties and this is I'rad on Dinillah to turn away or reject the religion of uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Imam Muhammad ibn the Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala said Al-Ashr Al-I'rad on Dinillah لا يتعلمه ولا يع ولا يعمل به ودليل قوله تعالى ومن أظلم مما ذكر بآيات ربه ثم أعرض عنها إن من المجرمين منتقمون. Allah subhanahu wa taala says in Surah Sajda, or the Imam said, Imam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab rahimahullah taala said, the tenth nullifier. He said. Anyone who turns completely away from the religion of Allah, neglecting the tenets of faith or not practicing them, has disbelieved. The evidence for this is the saying of the Almighty, and who does more wrong than he who is reminded of the verses of his Lord? Then he turns away from them. Verily, we will extract retribution from the Mujrimun meaning the disbelievers or the criminals or the sinners. And this is Surah Al-Sajda, uh, verse 22. Imam Ibn Al-Qayyim, rahimahullah ta'ala, mentions that the major disbelief, the major disbelief is in five categories or five types. Qal Ibn Al-Qayyim, rahimahullah ta'ala, wa amma al-kufr al-akbar, Imam al-Qayyim said, as for the major disbelief, it is five types. Kufr taqdeeb, wa kufr istikbar, wa iba ma tasdeeq, wa kufr i'rad, wa kufr shak, wa kufr nifak, nifak. Ibn al-Qayyim mentions these five uh, types of kufr of the major kufr, meaning if it's major kufr, what? It takes us out of the fold of Islam, wa'iyadun billah, min dhalika. The first one he mentioned was kufr taqdeeb. Kufr taqdeeb, this is to, fuhu i'tiqad, kathib al-rusul. Wahab al-qism qalil min al-kuffar. So, Ibn al-Qayyim says that the kufr taqdeeb or actually this is the statement of Sheikh uh, in the explanation by Sheikh Muhammad Bazmul, Hafidullah Ta'ala, he mentions in explaining what Ibn al-Qayyum means by uh, Kufr al-Takdeeb <coughs> that it is the belief that uh, of denying the uh, the messengers alayhim afdal salatu wasalam so it is denying the messengers and that they came with a message or denying some of their message. Uh, and he said that this is very few of the disbelievers fall into this category, meaning most of the disbelievers, especially, of course, from Ahl Kitab, they believe in a book and they believe in the messengers, alayhim afdal salatu wasalam. So they believe that there was a message. And uh, a a kufr, kufr taqdeeb also, as the Sheikh mentions, is, uh, it is taqdeeb bilisan, meaning is denying the message with one's tongue. And so this is one type of kufr. The other uh, branch of kufr that we're, uh, that uh, Imam Ibn al-Qayyim mentioned, wa kufr istikbar. This is the disbelief and this is the disbelief that Iblis, la'natullah alayhi, uh, shaitan, fell into. 
and it is to openly reject and refuse the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Iblis knew Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, had this interaction, uh, uh, you know, uh, with being amongst the malaika, and so it was through arrogance, istikbar, that uh, Iblis uh, fell, uh, fell into kufr. And this is, you know, uh, a very severe type of kufr because this involves uh, arrogance. Arrogance to the haq. Arrogance to the truth of Tawheed and the truth of Islam and the truth of the message and the truth of sound Islamic knowledge. And then coming to the next type of kufr that Ibn al-Qayyim mentioned, which is the kufr that we are primarily concerned with here, uh, kufr al-Irad. And this is the disbelief regarding uh, being turning away from listening and turning one's heart away from believing in the message and in the messenger so this is a type of rejection by turning away or as we're going to discuss being totally lazy and totally uh, rejecting out of uh, even having the opportunity to learn what is essential to believe but just totally rejecting that we're totally totally rejecting the message, not saying that the message is, believing that the message is uh, perhaps uh, the truth, but just total absence of any trying to, of any type of practice of the religion, and being totally away and neglecting the tenets of faith and neglecting the religion. This is the kufr. Kufr uh, uh, al-I'rad that we're, we're referring to. Then the other category of kufr that Ibn al-Qayyim mentioned, kufr al-Shak. This is the disbelief regarding having doubtfulness. You know, does Jinnah and Paradise, as Sheikh Salah bin Fuzan, he mentioned in his explanation, I believe, of Nawak al Islam, uh, from what I recall, and he mentioned you know, the person, uh, as an example of this type of disbelief, he mentioned the person who doubts you know, whether uh, paradise really exists, is there really a hellfire, you know, so th this person is between Iman and doubtfulness. So this doubtfulness, when you articulate this doubtfulness on your tongue, and you have this doubtfulness in your heart, we're not talking about that the shaitan uh, whispers was was. So we have to distinguish between this because I know some of our brothers and sisters are tested with was was. They're tested with uh, the whisperings of the shaitan excessively. And some people, in fact, because of mental conditions, they deal with issues of was was or perhaps from ayn or perhaps from seher that they are affected and the shaitan brings in most evil of I. Uh, uh, the evil of ideas and the evil of rejection of the haq to their mind. But this is a whispering from the shaitan. More often than not, this is a whispering of the shaitan. So you should not give that any credence and credibility. Say, I seek refuge in Allah from the accursed shaitan. And also say the dua that the Prophet said, Amen to Billahi wa Rasuli. You know, I, I, I believe in Allah and His Messenger. And I am happy with Islam as my religion. You know, say this to yourself in order to ward off those evil thoughts. But do not carry and, and believe, oh, I've disbelieved. I know some individuals that they begin crying, breaking out in tears and so forth, perhaps from Sihir, perhaps from whatever, because they give credence to this waswas. Do not pay attention to the waswas of the shaitan, because that's what it is. All people, all of us, 
uh, from Ahli Iman, at one time or another, the shaitan is going to whisper to you. And even the most evil of thoughts will come, as long as you don't act upon it, as long as you don't articulate it, speak about it, then remove that from you. And as long as you don't really uh, 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 have this creed, you really believe in that, then that, then that doubt has no, that, the, those kind of things, those waswas that has been whispered into you from the shaitan, or whispered into you from, because of the, the jinn, or seher, or, 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 or your own uh, consciousness, just that this crazy thought comes to you, because we don't know how the, the complexities of the human mind, and this, uh, this happens from t time to time. But seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from it, and keep on your iman. Because you're from Ahli Iman. So this is how we deal with that kufr al shak This is the the the, the kufr, uh, this is how we deal with uh, anything which appears to be doubt. The kufr al shak as we mentioned, this is actually in the heart of actually being between, you know, not really believing. I don't know if Muhammad sallallahu is really the prophet. Or really, the last prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, wa iyadin billah min thalika belief. Or I don't really know if there is if there is a God. Does Allah really exist? I'll just stick with the Muslims anyway, in case you know, and I'll die on that because it seems closest to the truth. Wa iyadin billah min thalika. This is the the doubt of really uh, 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 the shak, the kufr of shak. Be firm on your iman, and if the shaitan whispers to you. Deal with it. Deal with it through Iman. Deal with it through the legislated ways by seeking refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the cursed devils and from the whispering of the shayateen. And the last type of kufr Ibn al-Qayyum mentioned, uh, kufr al-nifaq. And that is also what we just, uh, uh, part of what I just uh, mentioned. Uh, the Shaykh mentions, فَهُوَ أَنْ يَظْهَرَ بِلِسَانِهِ iman. وَيَنْطَوِي بِقَلْبِهِ عَلَى تَقْذِيبِ فَهَذَا هُوَ النِّفَاقِ الْأَكْبَرِ The Shaykh mentions that nifaq, uh, the kufr al-nifaq, that this is to, 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 to illustrate on one's tongue or to speak that, and say that they're a believer and they're from Ahli Iman, which totally contradicts what's in their heart. And this involves denying the message of Islam, and negating it, and lying about uh, the, uh, the uh, of what's contained in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And this is the greatest. This is nifaq al akbar. This is the major nifaq. In fact, pointing out an example, a real live example that I know of, without doubt, this individual has apostated, left the fold of Islam. Is, is no longer a Muslim, and in fact, in fact, uh, spends their time uh, actively going against Islam. But I knew this individual in Yemen. This is the situation of Morton Storm. In fact, I'm mentioning this also. He recently posted on on, on my channel here, uh, trying to attack me uh, with regards to the Quran, and so I responded back to him in kind by mentioning that you have zero credibility. Because basically, you were an individual who, at one time, was a person of iman. I believe that he was a Muslim, and as he mentions himself in his book and his own words and his experience, that he spent, you know, he went through and he went from uh, sect to sect. And this shows us also the danger of his biya habitifillah to be careful. Stick with Ahl Sunnah. Stick with the Salafis. Meaning, stick with the Salafis, not a particular clique. That's not what I'm calling you to. I'm calling you to the madhab of the Salaf al -Sari. I'm calling you to the, to the, adhering to the Quran, adhering to the Sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, adhering to the way that the Salaf of this Ummah, the Sahaba, the Tabi'een, with Tabi'at Tabi'een, how they understood the religion. And then those Imams after them, all the way up until contemporary time, Ahl Sunnah is, is present. The Prophet said, There won't cease to be a group from my nation that continues to be on the track. The Haq. Ahl Sunnah is present. 
You'll find students of knowledge from Ahlul Sunnah with Jama'ah in Canada, in America, in the UK, in Indonesia, in Japan, probably in China, uh, Bangladesh without doubt, all, all over the world. You'll find Somalia, Ethiopia, South Africa. It doesn't matter because it's not restricted to a particular uh, clique or a particular group or a particular bunch of individuals, but it's all those individuals who adhere to the Quran, the Sunnah, and the madhab of the Salaf in their Aqidah, their creed, in their minhaj, and how they interact, their mu'amalat, their fiqh, and their manners, everything that all makes up the Sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam. So, this particular individual, and forgive me for digressing, bounced from sect to sect, and he was with Ahlul Sunnah, he was even known to our Imam, Sheikh Mukhbil, Rahmatullah the Sheikh knew and uh, knew this individual by name personally because he was that kind of individual. But then, after, and in accordance with his own history and what we witnessed, after getting with the extreme tekfiris, and he found his home and his place amongst them, and then eventually that shuck, that doubt entered his heart. And then it was kufr a shuck, and the next level for him was kufr. Uh, Kufr and Nifaq, the major Nifaq, because then he became an agent of the CIA, of the Danish intelligence uh, uh, services, and of M, uh, worked with M15, I believe they're called in the, the UK, or MI5, and all these other agencies to deceive the Muslims, to embed himself to the Muslims, not just to deceive the Tekfiris, we're not talking about that, but to deceive Ahl Islam. Because he renounced his Islam. When he began to work full force, he renounced Islam, as he mentions. And so I mentioned this story to illustrate for us the Kufr and Nifaq. Because then he was still going around in Yemen and other places uh, around the Muslims. On his tongue saying, yeah, I'm, I'm your brother, I'm from Ahli Iman, let's, let's go do this, let's go do this. And, and engaging with the Muslims. Even if he was with the wrong and evil and distorted Muslims, Ahla Takfir, or Ahla, uh, 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 the people of, of Takfir and the, and the, uh, uh, the Khwarij like belief, and on a foul, uh, facet minhaj. But nevertheless, they were Muslim. Nevertheless, he had renounced Islam and still embedded himself with the Muslims. So this is Kufr and Nifaq. This is what you illustrate outwardly is going against what is in your heart as far as your belief, your Iman. So those are the five types of, of kufr that Imam Ibn al-Qayyim mentioned. In addition to that, Sheikh uh, Muhammad uh, Bazmul, Ta'ala, he mentions in explaining this tenth nullifier, one of the benefits that he mentions, he said, that with regards to learning the religion, he said, <clears throat> He said, in the affairs of the religion or religious issues are of three types. He says, first, those things those things which are related to the foundation and creed, fundamental creedal issues, like Tawheed, and, and, and so on and so forth. He said, فهذي, and then, you know, the pillars of Iman, فَهَذِهِ مِنْ اِعْرَادْ أَنْ تَعَلَّمَهَا وَتَرْكْ تَعَلَّمَهَا فَإِنَّهُ يَكْفَرْ وَلَا يُعْذَرْ بِجَهْلِهِ إِذَا كَانَ عَنْ تَقْسِيرِهِ this is very important because this deals with the issue of takfir as well. He said that this person who rejects learning about the fundamental issues of creed, the fundamental itikad that every Muslim, that makes you a Muslim, knowing about who Allah is, you know, the, knowing about uh, that Allah is the only one worthy of worship, uh, you know, just basic issues of Tawheed, uh, uh, basic issues of Iman, you know, that there are six pillars of Iman, five pillars of Islam, these kind of very basic 
usul issues that we have to know as a Muslim, the one who rejects trying to learn these things and has left learning these things, then he is disbelieved and he is not excused by ignorance if, this is the important thing, if this rejection or this uh, turning away from learning those basic fundamental issues is not due to his own taqsir, his own, uh, re his own laziness, his own win uh, ma qudra, as he said, with the ability. So this means that a person, for example, in Saudi Arabia, to not know something about Tawheed, even the probably even the Bedouins, because this country, you know, they teach that in all the schools. So anyone who goes to school here should know basic issues, uh, those basic issues of uh, Iman and basic issues of Tawheed and so on and so forth. They go through these things in primary school. So a person here in Saudi Arabia would not have the excuse of Jahil. They would not have the excuse of Jahil in this category of issues of Tawheed. Absolutely not. Because it's it's in the, the school system, even if they don't go to school, it's everywhere. It, and they have the abil ability, as you mentioned, the Qudra, they have the ability to go and research that knowledge. Because it's all around them. Every, you know, in, in, even in the villages, there's probably someone who has learned something from the religion, uh, the people of, you know, uh, there are um, students of knowledge, there might be a sheikh, even in many of the remote places here. They have, you know, it's, it's, it's knowledge is muntashir, it's, it's widespread. But if you were in India, somewhere, you know, because India is huge, a huge uh, a continent, that if you were somewhere in a village there, it's not like the same hukum as someone in Saudi Arabia. Or you're in a village somewhere, perhaps in a remote place in Nigeria, or a remote place in some other. Nigeria is a Muslim country. However, perhaps Ahlabadiyah, the people in the, the remote village, may know nothing about those pillars. And I've met people in Ethiopia, which has a huge Muslim population, and Allah knows best if they had the excuse of ignorance, but they didn't know according to me asking them about pillars of Islam and things like that. They didn't even know really the five pillars and those basic things. Do they have the excuse of ignorance? Allah knows best, but they do have, uh, you know, uh, you know, so those uh, those individual uh, uh, ahkam or ruling upon a person with regards to that is something else and that go goes back to what we mentioned about takfir al-ma'ayyin, about making the hukum on a particular individual. The shahid or the purpose I'm trying to mention here that the sheikh was mentioning is that if you have the ability and there's nothing prohibiting you from learning about these basic aqidah issues, basic aqidah issues and basic, uh, you know, the five pillars of Islam, the six pillars of Iman and things like this, there's nothing prohibiting you from this. And, uh, you, you know, there, it's, it's, it is, uh, there is access to it and you refuse to do it and just remain in a state of ignorance just calling you know your name is Bilal your name is Muhammad but you don't know anything you don't know that there's pillars of Islam you don't act on anything of Islam then this person would not be excused but if they have act but uh, would not be excused for ignorance because they have access to that knowledge if they have access if they don't have access to that knowledge then that is uh, a different category of individual and perhaps depending on the particular situation, they would have the excuse of ignorance. The second type uh, with regards to uh, this i'rad on knowledge, this neglecting the Islamic knowledge, he said, a no'athani men a'rad men a'rad an tu'allam al-wajib alayhi min al-ibadat wal-a'mal kaslin wa tahawinin ma'a kudra وَعَدَمَ الْمَانِعْ فَإِنَّهُ يَعْثَمْ وَتُبْتِلْ عِبَادَةَ الَّتِي أَخَلَّ بِتَعَلَّمْ وَاجِبَاتِهَا أو أَرْكَانِهَا وَشُرُوتِهَا طيب. He mentioned the second category uh, and he said that this is the person who neglects 
uh, learning about those obligatory uh, actions in the religion from ibadat, you know, learning about properly praying, uh, you know, and properly giving zakat and the other acts of ibadat, or properly learning how to make hajj if, if they have the opportunity to make hajj, or uh, and other and other actions that are obligatory actions. We're talking about the wajibat, and they do this out of laziness and, and carelessness, with the ability to learn about this and without being prohibited from that. So this is the case of someone who they have the ability to get this knowledge, you know, basic knowledge of how to pray properly, but they make no effort and they leave that out of laziness. I, I you know, I'm busy. I don't have any time to learn about those things. I'll just pray however I want. He said that this person, that they are sinful and this could invalidate their ibadat, the worship, in which they have this these shortcomings in. For example, maybe he prays, but he his his prayer is very uh, you know there's many many mistakes, severe mistakes in his prayer. This can be a situation that invalidates his prayer, and he took no made no efforts to learn about it. So this person is a sinner because they didn't learn any of the conditions for prayer. They didn't learn how to pray properly, and they're you know have many shortcomings in their prayer and the conditions for their prayer. So this is a very this person is in a great danger, but the Sheikh mentions that this person is uh, sinful. And then he mentions as uh, in the situation, the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, in which uh, the man who uh, had prayed in the presence of the Prophet وسلم, and the Prophet said, you didn't pray. And then he repeated again and he said, you didn't pray. And then he, I believe it was for three times. And then the man asked, you know, you know, if I'm not praying, please, you know, show me how to pray. It shows that he was not excused for that. The prophet told him to repeat the prayer, that he had many shortcomings in his prayer. So then the prophet Sallallahu taught him uh, how to properly pray. Those are some of the benefits. Uh, that the Sheikh is mentioning uh, with regards to that. And then he mentioned Anu'a Thalith, the third uh, category. Min I'rad an ta'allum ad-deen. Ibadat wa i'tiqadat wa mu'amalat juhudin wa inqarin. Fahadha kafir. So he says, this is the the third category of, of person with regards to not, uh, with regards to uh, rejecting or completely turning away from learning the religion and uh, and how to properly practice uh, their ibadah, their worship, and their creed, their itiqad, itiqadat, and their transactions, all the transactions that they may do, business transactions and other aspects of mu'amalat, and they leave this knowledge, they neglect this knowledge with arrogance, from arrogance, and uh, you know, they practice by just total refusal, like, you know, I don't have time for prayer, and I don't have time to learn how to pray. You know, this person, that it's a type of arrogance with them, you know, that they have other times for the things for the dunya, but they don't want to learn those wajibat, those obligatory things, and they refuse to learn about their creed. They just, you know, it's, it's out of arrogance and it's out of, uh, of, 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 of denial and rejection, refusing. Then this person is a disbeliever and this is the one that fits under the ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and that we mentioned in the beginning, وَمَنْ أَظْلَمُ مِمَّا ذُكِرَ بِآيَاتِ رَبِّهِ ثُمَّ أَعْرَضَ عَنْهَا إِنَّ مِنَ الْمُجْرِمِينَ مُنْتَقِمُونَ uh, Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and who does more wrong than he was reminded of the verses of his Lord? Then he turns away therefrom. Verily, we will extract retribution from the mujrimin. Uh, we will get retribution from those disbelievers, those criminals, those sinners. And this is the one who turns completely away. And this is the one why Sheikh Muhammad ibn al -Wahab, he mentioned this one. This is the one who has uh, disbelieved. Some of the evidences with regards to this uh, 
nullifier of faith, this nullifier of Iman, this nullifier of one's Islam, which is to completely turn away from learning the religion of Islam and practicing it. Uh, so some of the evidences, as we mentioned already, one of the ayats, but another ayat is Surah Al-Asr, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, after Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, wal-Asr inna l-insana lafi khusr, illa l-ladina amanu wa amanu salihati wa tawasu bil haqqi wa tawasu bil sabr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by the time, by, by the time, verily mankind is in a loss. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that all of mankind is in a loss. In the insana lafi kusur. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states that insan, mankind, is in a loss. Then he says, he gets he makes istithna, he makes the exception. Illa amanu, except those who believe. Who are those who believe? Ahli Iman, illa ladina amanu amanu saliat. This is the person who the, so these are the, the category that is accepted from being in a loss. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ amanu, Those people will leave. وَعَمَلُ الصَّالِحَاتِ Do righteous deeds. وَتَوَصُلُ بِالْحَقِّ And they call to the truth. وَتَوَصُلُ بِالصَّرِ And they are patient upon this path. So they have these four characteristics. This is a characteristic of Ahli Iman. This is a characteristic of the, uh, the Mu'mineen. Sifat al-Mu'mineen. And these four characteristics denote what? They denote learning about the religions. How can you have uh, how can you have true iman without knowing what you believe in? So if someone says, I believe in Allah, so say a Christian or a Jew says they, they believe in Allah. They do have a belief in Allah, I'm sure. If if they're really a Christian or a Jew, they have a concept of Tawheed. They believe in Rububiyah, the Lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But they uh, they negate or they go against Tawheed al uluhiyah the Tawheed of Ibadah, meaning directing their worship solely to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they say they believe in Allah, but then they devote, maybe they violate even that lordship by saying Jesus uh, shares in that worship, that you should worship Jesus along with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's a violation really if they believe that Jesus has lordship then they have violated Tawheed al-Rububiyah even, and they've uh, violated Tawheed al-Uluhiyah because they are now uh, directing their worship, they supplicate to Jesus, Jesus, like you hear them all say, oh Lord Jesus, okay? This is in our community, we, we the, the, the Christians that from, from our community, we hear them all the time, they invoke, you know, my mother, my grandmother, all my, my family that are Christian, You'll hear that when they get in a, a difficult situation, they violate Tawheed al-Ibadah or Tawheed al-Uluhiyah. They begin to invoke and supplicate to Jesus, Oh, Jesus, help me. Okay? So this is a violation of that. So that shows that, as we are mentioning, that knowledge, al-'ilm, qabl al-qulli wal amal that you have knowledge preceding actions and statements that by gaining knowledge of Tawheed and this comes back to that knock that we're talking about that you you know to 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 not reject knowledge because by rejecting knowledge you are in fact you can go to the extent of rejecting your Iman or leaving Iman in totality if you don't learn what is wajib upon you if you don't learn uh, the basic asul and foundation of the religion as we just already discussed. So Ahli Iman, so all those people who fit in the category of, of khusr, of being uh, um, the, uh, you know, being at a loss, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, in the lansana lafi khusr, verily mankind is in a loss, that category of people, they're at a loss because they don't have proper Iman. They don't have full Iman. Because Allah made the exception for Ahli Iman. إِلَّا لَذِينَ amanu, Except those who believe. وَعَمَلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ And do righteous deeds. So you have to practice that knowledge. So it's all those steps. You have to practice the knowledge. You have to believe, which requires knowledge. You have to practice, which requires knowledge. You have to, uh, 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 um, you know, 
give, you know, share that knowledge to the extent of your ability. Command the good and forbid the evil. Share with the people as much as you're able to. And that requires knowledge. And uh, practicing patience. And that requires knowledge to know what to, to be patient about, to know how to, to practice those concepts. So all of that requires knowledge and it's the opposite of the person who rejects and who has uh, as we mentioned on the religion that they reject learning and turn and they've turned away from the religion in knowledge and in practice and that's the shahid that's the purpose of mentioning that verse uh, another verse uh, which illustrates for us is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِ فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً دُنْكَ وَنُحْشِرُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَعْمَى قال ربي لم حشرتني أعمى وقد كنت بصيرا قال كذلك أتتك آياتك آياتنا فنسيتها وكذلك اليوم تنسى الله سبحانه وتعالى says in سورة طه verse one twenty four through one twenty six he says, Subhana, woman a'rada an dhikri fa inna luhu ma'ishatin dhanka. That whoever turns away from my remembrance, then they will leave a lowly existence. This is what I said to uh, Mr. Uh, Morton Storm, because he once knew about Tawheed, he knew about Islam, but now he has rejected that. He is rejected. He has become of those people he has become of those people who've rejected the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that he lives ma'ishitin dunka. There's no doubt he lives a miserable existence now. Because if you leave Tawheed, I'm sure he doesn't have a purpose in his life before. At least before he knew what he was doing. He worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He knew he got up for Fajr. He used to pray. He used to do all these things. He tried to do higher acts of ibadah. But now he doesn't have a purpose. He's back. He just listens to Metallica, as he says. He just drinks wine. He eats pork. He has no, you know, and I'm sure, and, and enjoying uh, all the other things in the dunya. But it's a lowly existence. There's no happiness. How many people have a lot of the world open to them, and they're so unhappy? They live a miserable existence because they don't remember Allah at all. And they reject Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they live a ma'ishatim banka. They live a miserable existence. And I know when you've turned to hypocrisy that your your existence is 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 uh, is miserable. And I'll give you another example that I've seen in my life. I've known from my community because we didn't have the knowledge. We didn't have the people bringing us up. And I'm from Seattle, Washington. So we didn't have people to teach us. And a lot of us uh, reverts, the women especially, they came to Islam through men. It was just through marriage. We didn't have, uh, you know, people to help us, to, to help us and to help us in marriage and all the other issues that we dealt with as a, as a community. We're just trying to practice Islam. That's all we're trying to do by reading Bukhari and Muslim and the Quran, uh, the translations to the best of our ability, and we're making our own fit. We're just all kind of akhtar, all kind of mistakes but doing the best we can, without assistance. With that being the case, being in that state without that assistance, without proper Islamic knowledge and training as a fabric to the community, I can say that 70% at least of the people that I had known who came, came to Islam at the time that I did have left Islam, especially the women. And often I would be out in the community in general and I would run into many of the individuals and the women even a lot of them they were they lost their beauty they lost their light physically they really lost it because now they're out before they had that that, that, that sacredness of Islam protecting them they were trying to cover they were really trying to practice trying to be a good Muslim but then when they left that Islam they began to it's like they physically aged and they physically re removed so much of their innate beauty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given them, that light. And it actually even was physical. And even a lot of the brothers, 
you see that, was a handsome young warrior striving for Islam. But then they left Islam. They just, maybe they're gangbangers now. Maybe they're whatever, whatever aspect in life they went to. But they lost the light of Islam. And you can see it. You can see it in their faces. You see it in their actions. And it's a miserable existence. Going back to the ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَنَحْشِرُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةَ أَعْمَى So that they will be raised on the day of resurrection blind. And then they will say to this, قَالَ Rabbi, They say, uh, Why, Lima? Why did you uh, resurrect me uh, 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 blind when I used to be, I used to be able to see? Meaning in this life they were able to see. But in the hereafter, they're resurrected blind. Because Allah says they're blind. That they will be raised blind on the on Yom al -Qiyama. And then Allah says, or Allah will say, Likewise, we gave you, or we came to you, with our verses, our signs. And you forgot them. Likewise, this day, we forget you, or we will forget you. SubhanAllah. That is heavyweight. That is heavyweight right there. That you forgot Allah in the dunya, and Allah will forget you in the akhirah. May Allah bless us to be of those who remember him. So that shows the person, Ahle Arad. That shows the people who neglected, who neglected to learn, to practice Islam. And that is their end result. Another verse which which is evidence for this, uh, and, there, and there's there's many. We'll actually mention two ahadith just to wrap it up because it became a little longer than I wanted. The Prophet said, "Man salaka tariqan yaltalmasuhu bi almin sahalallahu tariqan al jannah." Whoever traverses the path of knowledge, Allah will. Make easy for him the path to paradise. So that lets us know that what? It's the path of Elm, which is makes it easier for you to get to paradise. The path of paradise is a path of knowledge. And as the Salaf used to say, Talib al Elm, Talib al Jannah, who, uh, the, the one who seeks knowledge, Islamic knowledge, is on the path to Jannah. Because if they have ikhlas and sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not because they just want a big a library, not because they want to show off to the people, not because they want the people to say they're a scholar, not because the this and that and they want reward in the dunya, but they did it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're seeking to come closer to learn more about their religion to Allah. They seek to come closer to Allah by calling people to Allah. Then that person is Talib of Jannah. And may Allah bless us to be from amongst them. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. The Shahid, the purpose of mentioning that hadith is it shows us that the, the path to Jannah is through knowledge, and the one who neglects that is the mafhum mukhalifa, the, 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 the opposite understanding or the implicit uh, meaning of this hadith is that the one who rejects knowledge is on the path to Jahannam. Or Allah will make easier for them to go to the hellfire. Because why? They rejected knowledge, they rejected practice of Islam. So that means that they are choosing an alternative path to the haq wa'iyadhan billah min dhalika. The Prophet ﷺ said, Man yuridullahu bihi khayran yifaqofidin. Whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives them understanding of the religion. And this goes along with that other hadith. That shows that Allah wants good for you. The fact that you're, you're trying to learn more about your Islam by listening to lectures, by attending lessons, by calling your students and, and visiting your local community by sitting in the halakat of Quran, you know, by doing all these things, you're trying. The more that Allah gives you knowledge, it shows a love that Allah has for you. Whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives them understanding of the religion. So those people who traverse that path of knowledge, which is the path which is easier to Jannah, easy is a path to Jannah, and not just that they traverse that path, but they do it with the correct intention and Allah gives them tawfiq to have a better understanding of their religion. 
and to gain some sort of fiqh fideen, that's a sign Allah loves that person. And that is a sign Allah wants good for that person. And may Allah bless us to be of those. So that's a, a lesson I want us to, to learn, and I'm going to slightly regress, because I've known many people, many people, uh, especially in Yemen, all the way from the time of 1997 up until now, who have went to Yemen, who have went to Egypt, uh, 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 but especially more I'm familiar with a lot of students of knowledge from Yemen I've met from the UK and from America and from all Somalia and from all over the world and Ethiopia I've met at least hundreds if not thousands hundreds let's just be realistic hundreds and also in Saudi Arabia living here for so many years as well how many I've met how many graduates from the Islamic University some of them we don't hear anything about it's not because they're not trying to be famous you know, it's not about being famous and stuff, but some of them we hear, we hear news about them. Oh, so-and-so doesn't really, you know, some people have left Islam even. Some people who are graduates from Janislamia have left Islam. Few, but there are those. We know of them. There are those who have traversed that, that path of knowledge, but they didn't get fiqh fideen. That's the point. I know people who lived in, who lived in the Maj with Imam Muqbil and stuff, and Allah didn't give them necessarily fiqh fideen because it was illustrated on how they deal with issues and that they don't do any da'wah, they don't do anything. It's not that everybody has to be out in the forefront doing da'wah, but if you, if Allah favors you with something, you need to be sharing some of that in some form or another. But certain individuals, Allah didn't grant them fiqh fideen. Maybe they just hung out. Maybe they slept all the time in different places. Some people, they float their way through the Islamic University and then they don't do anything even at the end. They didn't really gain really fiqh fideen. That comes from Allah. That's tawfiq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah grant us fiqh fideen, ameen, and bless us to practice, ameen. So this is uh, very important for us to know that this is a dangerous thing to fall in, to neglect uh, this uh, neglect learning your religion and there's still there's so many ahadith uh, and there's so many ayats which illustrate this for us uh, then Imam Muhammad ibn Dohab rahimahullah ta'ala going back to the base of the treaties he said wala farq fi jami'a hadhi nawaqid bain al-hazli wa jadi wa khaifi illa mukra وكلها من أعظم ما يكون خطرا وأكثر وقوعا فينبغي للمسلم أن يهذرها ويخاف منها على نفسه نعوذ بالله من مجيبات غضبه وأليم عقابه وصلى الله وسلم على خير خلقه محمد وعلى آله وآله وصحبه أجمعين so Sheikh Muhammad ibn Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala at the end of the treaties he ends the treaties by saying and there's no difference from all of these different the, the situation for all, all of these people who fell into these nullifiers of Islam between the one who did it arrogantly out of arrogance and fully rejecting these acts of uh, you know deliberately falling into these nullifiers of faith or the one who does it and makes fun of the faith or does it out of fear he said except the one who is forced and we mentioned that in the beginning all of them are from the most serious and dangerous in uh, things which invalidate a person's faith and that many people fall into this so he said it is essential for a Muslim to beware of this or be aware of it and to be fearful from it upon themselves for him him and him for his or herself to be aware and afraid of falling into one of these nullifiers of, of the faith and he said and we seek refuge in Allah from the uh, attaining his anger or his wrath and his painful torment for those who gain his anger and wrath. And he said, and then he says, and may peace and blessings be upon the best of creation, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and his family, and his companions, all of them. So he ends the treaties, 
in that uh, in that way. So, to recap on this naked min nawak al Islam, neglecting something in the religion, according to some of the ulama, is of two types. First, total disregard, which expels the perpetrator from the religion which entails neglecting the commandments of Islam, which is a condition of sound faith. Okay, so that is, this person is neglecting the commands of Allah Jal. Also neglecting obligatory knowledge that is required to practice Islam expels one from Islam. A person who does this is disregarding the commandments of Allah and his messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In addition, it is imperative to understand that faith is comprised of belief, uh, 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 belief and actions in the heart uh, or actions of the heart uh, physical actions actions and that which is articulated on the tongue so uh, again this has to do with Iman what is Iman comprised of? it's com com comprised of three parts in Islam Islam is different than for example Christian Christianity and other faiths in which you know they believe that Iman is only in the heart Islam from what we know, learn from the Quran and the Sunnah and the Ijma of the Salaf, the consensus of the, the pious predecessors, is that Iman is composed of basically three types. Belief in the heart, actions of the limbs, which illustrate that Iman, and is also part of that Iman, and statements of the tongue. Statements of the tongue, uh, commanding the good and forbidding the evil, taking the Shahada. These are statements of the tongue which articulate a person's Iman. Belief in the heart, believing in Tawheed, believing in uh, having Tawakkul, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, having, uh, putting your trust in Allah. This is the actions of the heart. Uh, and physical actions, removing something harmful from the road, giving salam, shaking someone's hands, salat. All of these are a part of Iman. They're a part of Iman, so we cannot reject those kind, uh, reject anything from it. The second category uh, regarding uh, where or second category the second way in which a person neglects uh, from Iman neglects uh, learning the religion is partial neglect uh, which does not constitute disbelief as we already mentioned and Sheikh Bismuth he mentioned three types but here, one of our mashaykh, I think this is Sheikh Salih bin Fuzan, or it's Sheikh, uh, uh, Sheikh, <coughs> this is from uh, one of the sheikhs, a, f a female, uh, or she is at least a, a strong student of knowledge, because she's done a lot of nice explanations of some Akita books, and I took this from her, but this is her statement, and she mentioned, her name is, uh, Hanan bint Ali al Yamani. And she said in her explanation of Noach al Islam, she said the second way is the partial neglect, which does not constitute disbelief. And it is disregarding an obligatory action from the Sharia. So this is the one who's lazy with regards to uh, some of the actions of the Sharia. So whoever neglects something from the religion that is not related to disbelief and there is no text to support it being kufr, or disbelief, then this does not constitute disbelief. So, for example, the one who disregards the responsibility of serving his parents. So they disregard this. This is from Iman. This shows that they have weak Iman. Although this constitutes a major sin, it does not entail disbelief. Nor does the one who neglects his parents become a disbeliever due to this. In addition, those who fail to remember a law and practice his religion also can fall into disbelief if they neglect these forms of worship in totality. So if they do it in totality, some of these acts of worship, then this can negate their Islam in totality. billah. <clears throat> and what further proves this point is a statement of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam as the Prophet ﷺ said, in the fee jazid mudghatin wa idha salah uh, idha salaha salaha jazid akullu wa idha fasada fasada jazid akullu ala wahi wa qalb. Prophet ﷺ said, in the body there is an organ, and if it is pure, then the whole body is pure. 
and if it is impure, then the whole body is impure. Verily, it is the heart. Sheikh Abdul, uh, Abdulaziz al Rais explains if in the heart there is fear and hope and love, and a person lives a long time without anything that prohibits his expressing his faith by doing deeds, then for sure they will be, there will be a positive effect upon his actions according to the level of faith in his heart, or else the heart will become void of fear, hope, and love, and a heart void of the actions of the heart is the heart of a disbeliever, and this is by consensus. So it shows us that the, that, that iman in the heart, it will manifest itself on the limbs. The person who rejects faith, they will, uh, you know, who rejects learning about the religion, as we mentioned, that they can totally invalidate their iman by doing this, and they will have a dead heart, because they rejected iman. Sheikh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah said, It is not possible that a believing man will sound faith in his heart, that Allah has made it obligatory upon him prayer, alms, fasting, and hajj, live his entire life without prostrating a single prostration, nor fasting a single Ramadan, nor praying, nor paying alms, nor making hajj to his house, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's house. This is not possible, and it can only come from one with hypocrisy and apostasy in his heart, not from a person with correct iman. Sheikh, uh, so this this shows us, and there's many things we can uh, mention, but we've already mentioned some of the nasuls and some of the great benefits from the ulama with regards to this. So all of these, uh, uh, and then uh, as we mentioned, Imam Muhammad Abdul Wahab mentioned uh, that. Uh, in the end of the treaties, as he said, there's no difference between any of those uh, nullifiers of faith, regardless of whether they were committed jokingly or unintentionally or out of fear. They all constitute disbelief unless done under co compulsion. We seek refuge in Allah from those things that cause his wrath and punishment. So that shows us that when a person is forced, that is one of the nullifiers, uh, that is one of the mana, mana of takfir, that prohibits a person from making takfir. And the purpose of, uh, of learning this treatise, as we mentioned, is not for us to make takfir of people, but it's for us to learn some of those things which invalidate our faith in order to be careful of them, in order to practice based upon iman and avoiding the nullifiers of faith. Some of the benefits we gain from some of the scholars of Ahl Sunnah, from some of the questions, uh, Muhammad ibn Abdul, uh, Muhammad Sheikh uh, Muhammad uh, bin Uthaymeen was asked, what is the ruling regarding giving a disbeliever money or a gift with the intention of making them receptive towards Islam? So we'll read just some beneficial questions, uh, some of the fatawa of our, of our ulama. He said, there is no problem with giving a disbeliever a gift or giving them a home or living in a place for the purpose of making him receptive towards Islam. So this is a means of da'wah. However, it is imperative to put things in perspective so that the person being invited to Islam is actually a person who has interest in Islam. As for the one who is one of the leaders of disbelief, who has no desire to embrace Islam, then he should not be given anything except for the purpose of repelling his harm meaning to, in order to protect the, the Muslims from his harm, maybe a gift, maybe showing kindness to him, in order to prevent his harm, prevent him from harming and killing and attacking Muslims. Uh, the second question, another question that was posed to Ben Othaymin, when inviting someone to Islam, should we explain to them the ruling regarding apostasy? Imam uh, Ben Othaymin said, it is not permissible to mention the ruling regarding apostasy, because that contradicts the inv invitation to Islam. But instead, one should mention the good things in Islam and that a person will be saved from the punishment of the hellfire and Allah will make the one who embraces Islam from amongst the pious people, etc. As for mentioning the ruling regarding apostasy, this is like saying embrace Islam and if you leave Islam, we will execute you. This is not permissible because it will scare people away from Islam. So it shows us the, the hikmah, that da'wah is a thing of hikmah. You know, it, it requires fiqh fideen, it requires having wisdom when you convey the knowledge of Islam. Sheikh Salam bin Fulzan was asked, What is the ruling regarding the person who leaves all outward actions of faith 
but he still utters the testimony of faith and believes in the obligatory duties but never acts upon any of them. Is he a Muslim or not? It should also be known that he has no Islamic excuse for not, ex for not performing those obligations and he is able to do so. So Sheikh Salih bin Fozan, half of the Allah Ta'ala, he responds, the pers this person is not a believer. Whoever believes in his heart and exhibits faith in his speech but does not act upon it and does not do any deeds whatsoever without a legitimate excuse is not a believer. This is because faith comprises all that we have mentioned just as Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah holds that faith is comprised of statements of the tongue, belief in the heart and actions of the limbs and faith cannot be attained except with all three components and whoever leaves off any of these three components is not a believer. Uh, from uh, amongst the other beneficial questions, what is considered the major disbelief or apostasy? Is it restricted to creed and obstinance, obstinacy and lying regarding acceptance of belief or more general than that? Uh, disbelief, uh, Fozan replied, disbelief and apostasy occur when one uh, of the nullifiers of faith well known to the scholars are violated. Therefore, whoever falls into one of these sins without the excuse of ignorance is considered an apostate and disbeliever, and it is for us to judge him according to that which is apparent from his act statement or actions, because it is only upon us to make a judgment by what is evident. As for what is concealed in his heart, only Allah the Almighty and Magnificent knows that. So whoever utters disbelief or an action of disbelief, then we judge him according to his saying or action, if it is an action or saying of apostasy. Unless he is excused due to ignorance, as we mentioned, or force. And this is regarding things that are clear according to the Quran and Sunnah, like the major shirk and disbelief. As for the things that are ambiguous, then it is incumbent to make things clear so that the person who has erred understands them correctly. So this shows us the importance of those knowing the issues related to takfir and that this is reserved for the ulama and the qadat, the, the, the Islamic judges, not for just any of us to go around trying to make tatbiq of these principles of takfir which are very, uh, very serious principles uh, with regards to uh, making judgments about a person's faith in Iman. There are many other benefits I wanted to mention, but I think I'll end it there because our treatise has gotten long. And for some of these other benefits, you can return to my other explanations on my channel with regards to uh, the Naqid Noakid al Islam or the Nullifier's Faith that I did prior to this. In the last lectures, you'll find uh, many of these questions that I translated from some of the ulama of Ahl Sunnah regarding just important issues that we can benefit from, from our scholars. And I also advise going to some of the translated text uh, explanations. If you decide to go and do further study about these nullifiers of faith, Sheikh Salim Fozan and Sheikh Abdulaziz Rajihi, his, their explanations are translated into English and I highly advise going to them and we use a lot of their explanations in our explanation here in our studies uh, to bring benefit from them and from other scholars of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah and Talib al -Tar -Ilm. And so my advice is to go through Sheikh Abdulaziz Raji, his explanation, Sheikh Salim bin Fozan's, because I believe they're both translated in English and you can get them for free, download them on the internet. Uh, so these are the nullifiers of faith and that were, were mentioned by Muhammad ibn al Wahhab. And I hope that this was of benefit to my brothers and sisters in Islam who are listening. And I know that I benefited by going back over them and doing some minimal preparation that I did for some of these issues that helped me to have a better understanding of these nullifiers of faith. And this is why it's never uh, an advice I want to give is that even if you've studied a book, to study it again with another student of knowledge or to study it and read it and read explanations is khair, it's good, and actually it's actually a necessity because we forget and we need to, and this is Talib al-Ilm, seeking knowledge, it requires mumarasa, it requires going back over issues to become fresh, to go with those texts. And you'll find other benefits, you'll find other understandings by understanding with by going to other ulama of Ahl Sunnati with Jama'ah.
I'm not saying Ahl al-Bid'ah. Don't, don't read the Tekfiri's explanation or someone who you don't know their explanation of the same text because you, you may have totally uh, distorted views which is in accordance with the Tekfiri's. That they will use the same text but they will come to totally different conclusions. وَعِيَذٍ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ضَلَاءٍ And so it's very important to stick with the scholars of Ahl al-Sunnati wal Jama'ah and the Talibat al-Ilm of Ahl al-Sunnati wal Jama'ah and, and, and benefit from their works and benefit from a variety of explanations and a variety of scholars of Ahl al-Sunnah and Talibat al-Ilm and you will gain a, a, a great, greater insight into these texts and the more knowledge you get the more tools it gives you to be able to understand things and to make some uh, of your own maybe you find that one of the scholars has stronger evidence on a particular issue in which they differed over from Ahl Sunnah on those very daqiq Messiah, those very very um, uh, those very in-depth uh, issues which are not from the foundation of course the, the Aqid of Ahl Sunnah they don't differ over but there might be some Masail Daqiq some very specific uh, you know Masail that were not really uh, responsible for everyone to go into that the ulama may differ over. So this is why it's important to seek knowledge and seek knowledge from a variety of ulama of Ahl Sunnah. Uh, the last thing I want to mention is that the certificates should be ready. Bi'idnillah, I'm just going to have to do it in a, uh, it's going to be done just by email. I'm going to figure out a way to do my sig signature electronically because I don't want to get them and then have to do them by hand and then scan them and I don't have time for that. So we will send the certificates by email to all those who participated and gave me their names and their email address. Wafakana wa yakum, may Allah bless us all with the class, with the bat. And we seek refuge in Allah from knowledge which has no benefit and hearts that are hard and from selves which are dissatisfied and from uh, supplications that are not uh, accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct from Allah Azza wa Jalla, anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.